Hello everyone, Tom Morley here with another video in the Let's Make a Game series with the Godot Game Engine. This will be the third video in the Sound Blaster 84 project. To get started on this project you need to download the source files and you can find the link for those below. Once you've downloaded the source files, create a projects folder and put the Sound Blaster 84 zip file in that projects folder. We'll extract that and that will create a Space Blaster 84 folder with the source folder inside. The source folder will contain all of the files that we'll need to create our game. So let's back up. And I'm using Godot 2.0 Alpha, so you'll need 2.0 Alpha or better. And there's bound to be some bugs in this version of Godot, so if we run into any, we'll just figure it out from there. So let's uh, open up Godot. We're going to need to generate a new project. We'll go to that projects folder and we'll go into Space Blasters 84 and we'll click open. And the project name Space Blaster 84 is fine. We'll click create. Now we'll open up that new project and it defaults to the 3D tab, we will go to the 2D tab. You see here that I also am running my key monitor program so that you can see any mouse clicks and what I type up here should help out throughout this series. When the project first loads up, it loads to some default settings and I believe the resolution is 800 by 600 represented by this blue line here. So we need to change that. We'll click on scene, go into project settings, and we'll scroll down to display and you see it right here 800 by 600 we need this to be 1080 by 1920 and when I'm working on it on the desktop I want to be able to stretch it and keep the aspect ratio as well so our stretch mode from disabled will change it to 2D and the stretch aspect we are going to keep. We're going to go from ignore to keep. Close it and if I use my middle mouse button to scroll down you'll see that it actually changed the resolution of our game project here represented in blue. Okay so we need to have at least a root node so let's click on this button here to create a new node and the uh, node is fine. We'll rename that to our SB84 root underscore root. So that gives us a starting point. Let's go ahead and save this scene. Uh, we'll click on scene. Save scene as. And I want to create a new folder. This scene will be for the main, so it's going to be SB84 underscore main folder and for the scene we'll do the same thing it's going to be the s make sure i'm on it here it's going to be sb84 underscore main scene and we'll save it okay so for this project i just need this main scene to have some default behavior to it. I need it to be aware of when a game starts and when a game ends. So I need to have some way of being notified that a game ha has started, is running, and uh, some something's died and the game's over. So I like to see that right here on the game screen while I'm creating a game. So let's do that by creating a label down here on the bottom. Click on add create new node and the label node is in the control area the green control area scroll down and you'll see it here double click on it to add it and this is going to give me information so I'm going to relabel this to label underscore info this is going to be an information label for me now here it is over here we're going to resize it and of course I don't want it up top so we're going to move it down to the bottom 
and I wanted to have some text in here when we first start up the scene, when we start running the scene. So let's go over to the inspector and there's a text area that we can give it some initial text and let's just type in info here and press enter. And you can see right here in very, very small font, it does say info. Now one of the, I guess, unique things about a game engine as opposed to a word processor, if you're used to a word processor, you might expect here in the inspector something for the font so that you can increase the size and change the, the font type. Now. I don't see any way to change a font size here in the inspector and that's because it doesn't exist. What you need to do is you need to import the fonts in the size that you expect them to be in the final game. So we need to do that because I'm not going to live with this small little font here. So let's import a font. So we're going to click on import. We're going to go to font. Now where is the source font? This is part of the zip file that I that you downloaded earlier. So we know that it's in the source folder and in font. I've already unzipped these fonts. And uh, in earlier videos, I said I was going to use Modak. Well, I changed my mind. We're going to use Chintzy CPU font, which is pretty cool. I'm going to open that up. We're going to use the Chintzy, not the Chintzy S. So double click on Chintzy, and you'll see that the style changes here. And a size that's pretty good for this game will be a size of 60. Press enter. You see the, the font gets larger here and we are going to change the destination resource. We're going to click on that and we want it, that font to go into our main folder because it's part of our main scene. So we'll click OK and then we'll click import. So it didn't change the size of that just because we imported the font, right? So what we need to do is we need to tell it that we want this label to have uh, the font we just imported. So over here in the inspector, under custom fonts, click on this little down arrow, arrow, click load. Now we need to go to where we imported the font, not the source folder, but we actually imported that font in, into our SB84 main folder. Remember that? So double click on that and there's our font. All right. So that looks pretty good. So now if I click on this run button here, it should pop up and there you go. I've got the resolution that I'm looking for and there's my infographic right there. So I guess we're on our way. The next thing I need to do is to incorporate some behavior to this main scene. I want it to be aware of when the game is running and when a player has died and the game is over. That's really all I needed to do at this point. So I can't do that here. I need to create a script to give this scene some behavior. So let's do that. Let's come over here and with our root selected, make sure that your root is selected because we don't want to create a script for the label. We want it to be in the root. So make sure that's selected and click on this icon here to create a new script. This is going to pop up and it's going to ask us where the path is that we want to create the script and it looks good to me. It's going to put it right in our Space Blaster 84 main folder and it's going to name it uh, SB underscore 84 main. That's fine with me. So click create and we get some default behavior here. I want to give it new behavior. So we need to create at least one new variable, right? We need to know when the game is running. So we'll create the variable game running. Of course, when we first start up, it's going to be false. Now the ready function is where we can set up some initial state to our main scene. So we don't want it to pass this function any longer. We need to set up some type of loop and there's a couple of different um, main game loops in, or main functions in Godot. The one that we're going to use for this particular scene is just the standard process loop. So we need to set that loop up to start running. So we'll set process 
to true because we want to use it. So we need to put the process loop in our script. So let's do that. Function process delta. Now I said I need to know about two different states in my game, right? So I need to know if my game is running or if it's not running. So if game running equals false, So if the game's false, um, it, just at this stage of the game, if the game is false, I want to be able to start the game. So if the game is false, how am I going to start the game? One way for me to do it just to start testing things out is just to hit the enter key. So where, I guess, would I set up the enter key? You know, in your project settings, if you go to your project settings and you look at your input map, you have some default behavior that's already been created for you. You've got a UI accept um, defined where that's going to be the enter key. So we'll use that UI accept to find out if somebody pressed the enter key. And I want a way to basically have a player die. In this case it's just going to be you hit the escape key and the game is over. So you see here under UI cancel you can press the escape key and uh, we can use this to say basically that the game is over somebody's died so those are the two behaviors that we're looking for UI accept and UI cancel so we'll close that so we need to test for a key being pressed so if input oh, why is it yelling at me oh, I forgot to Put my colon there. There we go. So if input dot is an action pressed, and there you go, is action pressed, and we said that the UI accept is the enter key, right? So we'll put that in there. So if an action is pressed and it is the accept key, what do I want to do? Well, first thing I want to do is I want to say that the um, game running is equal to true, right? So we want to say, hey, this game is running. Next thing that I want to do is I want to give myself some notification that, hey, the game is running. So how can I do that? That's what I put that label there for, right? So we can say get node. So we want to get a node, we want to get that label node. Get node and we're going to drop down to label info. And we're going to dot set text it. And we're going to say, hey, guess what? I'm running. So now if I play it and I press the enter key, it should tell me, hey, guess what, you're running. Now, if the game is running, if it's true, so if it's if it's if running is false, it's gonna do this. But if it's true, I want to do this. So we'll say else. Lowercase. If it's not false and it's true, then I want to check for another key, right? So if my input dot is action pressed is what? Remember cancel, that's going to be my escape key. If it's cancel, what do I want to do here? Well, the game running is going to change its behavior, right? We just said somebody died, so game running is going to equal false.
and we want to be notified on our label. So we'll do the same thing. We'll get the node and that name, node, label info, and we're going to set the text on it again. I'm going to set it to game over. And that should give me the behavior that I'm looking for. Let's click play and see what happens. Okay, so it starts up and I initially set it to info. So now I'm going to press the enter key. And it says I'm running because I pressed the enter key. Now I'm going to press the escape key. I press the escape key and it says game over. So I press the enter key and the escape key and I'm getting the behavior that I expect. So when the game first starts up, right, I can have some general info like a menu or whatever and it says press enter to play the start the game. So I press enter and then, then I can start running my game and when something dies you get your game over screen. So we've got the default behavior that we were looking for in our main route. So that's all there is to this particular video. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next one.